So when you first get attacked as a targeted individual, at least in my case, most of the people I've spoken to, you have no idea what's actually going on. hard to explain to someone that's never felt it. I'd never experienced anything like it in my life. I kept feeling the attack. I couldn't get away from it. I didn't know what to do. I could hear these weird, you know, these sounds. It, I could hear things along with the attack. So I was feeling this energy hitting me. At the same time, I could hear something that sounded like it was rolling along the floor. And I would go from bedroom to bedroom. I even hid in the closet at one point. I would hear sounds like someone moving the furniture, which just terrified me more. I would feel my heart speeding up, my heart slowing down. I would feel pain. I, I didn't know what to do. I was going online trying to figure it out. How do I protect myself? I tried just layers of tinfoil and I would hear things kind of pinging off of it and at one point I heard a man's voice almost like a video game like it was a game to him you know he he was doing this and I maybe I was some avatar on his screen I don't know I heard his voice say no when I put this tinfoil all over my body to try to protect myself and I tried mirrors I tried everything and I would try moving around the condo and this went on for three days and it was terrifying and I couldn't sleep and I knew that what was happening, like it just was hard to explain to someone and I, I had looked online and I'd read that people don't you know, no one believes you. If you try to go to the police, they won't help you. But I didn't know what to do. I really, really believed that someone was trying to kill me, you know, because of what I would feel with my heart. And, you know, I, I had done 14 hours. I done almost all of them. I've got about five left. And so I'd never had heart problems in my life. And I was skiing at 12,000 feet. So anything about radio frequency, I didn't know how to document this. I just knew that I was being attacked. And I, I really thought they were going to kill me. So when I decided that my only recourse was to go to the police, it was 
maybe like four in the morning and I was alone at the time when this was happening. I went outside, I saw the neighbors, um, they were just two doors down, unit um, 202 in the building that I was in at Ski and Racket in Breckenridge. And they were sitting in their car with the lights on at four in the morning. I told myself, okay, maybe they work at a bakery. Maybe they do something early in the morning. They have to work early. I said, don't be paranoid. You know, um, maybe there, it's a coincidence they're out there with the cars in the car with the lights on. So I drove around. We have like a little complex here with three buildings. And I drove around. Instead of leaving out of the complex to go straight to the police, I thought, well, I'll just go around the circle and make sure that car's not following me to the police. Well, they went around the circle too. They followed me. Being tortured for three days and feeling like someone's trying to kill me. And then they're there following me in a car. I just assumed they were gonna kill me. So I pulled over to let them go by and they just stopped and stayed right behind me. I pulled over, they pulled over, they wouldn't go around me. I sat there for a while and so I drove around again. I took a picture of their their vehicle like from behind, just the lights and the license plate. I knew where they lived because we all have assigned parking spots. And later I looked them up to see who they were. I suspected them before that night because they had flown a drone over my roommate. You got problems in your life I love. You got a broken heart. He's double dealing with your best friend. That's when the teardrops start, fella. You got the phone, I'm here alone. I'll make a social call. Come right in, we'll get down him. We'll have ourselves. I didn't know how to describe it to the police or to anyone. They'd asked me if I wanted to see someone there, you know, obviously some kind of psychiatric person. And I said, no, I, I, I really don't want to be labeled that way. I'm, I'm not, I have no mental history. I'm a professional. I've, you know, I'm very... I mean, successful. I, they asked to come back to the condo, and, and I actually told them they could because I thought that whoever was doing what they were doing, if they saw the police come, it might deter them. And they walked around the condo, you know, just, I guess, a welfare check to make sure I had food. They, they just walked and looked in all the rooms, and they're like, this is a really nice place. You know, they, they, they said, wow, this is really, really nice. And I was thinking, gosh, what, what did you expect what they thought? You know, because what I was telling them was out of their comfort zone. And so that when they came back and they saw like the food, the fridge was full, everything was clean. You know, it was a beautiful place. They were looking around, admiring the condo, basically. Um, and then they went in the master bedroom and they, they saw some protection I had. You know, I had some tin foil and stuff and the one officer like kind of gave me the look and I was kind of like oh yeah see there that's proof you're crazy because there was tin foil on the bed and um, the thing is that my father the electronic weapons specialist it told me it's not crazy to use tin foil because tin foil can block the um, it's literally radio frequency it's microwaves and so you need some kind of metal and enough tin foil can block the attack. So it's actually very sane to try to protect yourself when you're being attacked.
it's it's not like I'd ever read about targeted individuals. I didn't know anything about radio frequencies. I didn't know what they could be used to do. I didn't know about ultrasonic uh, sound waves and ultrasonic weapons. I, I knew nothing about this stuff. And when you're trying to survive, it's a really big incentive to learn. police were not very educated about it and you know luckily this doesn't happen to everyone and that's why they don't know about it um, but we need to educate the police we need to educate our mental health professionals about this so that they understand you know what what radio frequency can do to someone <laughs> 